Good day, Wonder Nurses! I'm Nurse Anne. Today, I will discuss about professional adjustment, nursing ethics, and jurisprudence. This is the summary of what I have learned during my review. I hope that this will also help you to understand this topic. Let's start! Let's define first what profession is. It is an occupation or vocation that requires advanced training and experience in a specific area of practice to provide service to the society. Next, what is professional adjustment? It is the holistic growth of the individual and the development of his or her capability for a quality performance of the profession. Lastly, what is a professional nurse? It is a person who graduated from a nursing program and obtained a nursing license authorized by a country, state, or province. A professional nurse must have a BSN degree, license, and must be physically and mentally fit. Roles and functions of a registered nurse. First, client advocate. A nurse who will speak in behalf of the patient to protect his or her right and to preserve the quality of care. Caregiver. This role encompasses the health care needs of the patient. Teacher. As a teacher, the nurse helps the clients to learn about their health condition. Health teaching is also important for health promotion in the hospital or community setting. Communicator, it is an interaction to all members of the healthcare team. The quality of communication is a fundamental factor in nursing care. Manager, the nurse who delegates nursing activities and responsible for managerial tasks. Change agent, the nurse assists the patient to modify their behavior and lifestyle for the recovery of their health. Lastly, leader. A nurse leader influences the staff to work together and accomplish a specific goal. We have three types of leader. First, we have autocratic. It fosters dependence and it is efficient on emergency situation. Second, democratic. It fosters independence and it is useful for the healthcare team. Lastly, we have laissez faire, a French word which means allow to do. It fosters chaos and it is effective if the members are competent and motivated. Nursing ethics, autonomy, self governance and the right to make and implement own decision. Veracity, to tell the truth. Beneficence, to do good for the benefit of the patient. Non-maleficence, this is the act of doing no harm to the patient. Justice, to treat patient fairly. Principle of Epikia, an exception to the general rule. Deontology, it is principle-based. It focuses on patient's rights, duties, and obligation. The end does not justify the means. Lastly, we have teleology. It is consequence-based. The end justifies the means professional negligence and malpractice what is negligence it is the commission or omission of an act by a prudent nurse during his or her shift that causes an injury to the patient 
four elements to consider it as negligence. First, existence of duty. Second, failure to meet the standard of appropriate care. Third, foreseeability of harm. Fourth, presence of injury or harm. Example of negligence is a wrong medication given to a patient and there is an adverse reaction that happened. Another example is failure to notify the physician to any relevant findings or assessment that results to worsening of the patient's condition. Malpractice. It occurs when a nurse fails to competently execute his or her duties and it causes harm or injury to the patient. It also means stepping beyond one's profession. Before we proceed to the next slide, please take time to click the like and subscribe button. This is for you to keep updated to our new videos. I really appreciate the support. Let's continue. Right to privacy and breach of confidentiality. Privacy, it is about the person or identity. For example, the nurse should close the door, blinds, or curtains in every procedure. In this simple act, the right to privacy of the patient is being observed. Confidentiality, it is about the data or information of the patient. For example, the patient's chart should not be shown or discussed to anyone that is not part of the healthcare team or to any person that is not authorized by the patient. Advanced Directives Living Will A directive given by the patient before he or she become incapacitated. For example, DNR order. When the patient is in DNR situation, the team must not give any resuscitative medication and will not perform CPR, intubation, and defibrillation. Durable power of attorney or healthcare by proxy. It is when the patient appoints a person to decide in his or her behalf when he or she becomes incapacitated. Principles of legal liability. Res ipsa locator. Latin for the thing speaks for itself. Damnum absque injuria. Latin for loss or damage without injury. There is harm to the patient, but there is no unlawful act that is present. For example, chemotherapy. Force majeure. It refers to the occurrence of an irresistible force that is unforeseen or inevitable like natural disasters or calamities. Respondent superior. Latin for let the master answer. A rule that the employer is responsible for the negligent act or omission of its employee. Inform or enlightened consent. It is given by the person who is legally capable after fully understanding the content of the consent form. It must be obtained from the patient or to his or her authorized representative. The nurse secures the consent and acts as a witness. The physician explains and obtains the consent. Who is capable to sign the consent? 18 years old and above, emancipated minors, sane individual, and conscious. For minor and mentally ill patients, parents or legal guardian can sign the consent form. For emergency situation, no consent is needed prior to the procedure because it may cause greater injury if the procedure is delayed. This is what we call implied consent. If the patient is conscious but cannot read or write, thumb mark can be used as a signature and it needs two witnesses. 
Medical records. Purposes. It serves as a vehicle for communication. It is for research and education purposes. For legal protection of the hospital and medical staff. Nurses' notes. It should be written accurately and legibly. Date and time is in chronological order. For late entry, put the word addendum. The best time to write is after doing the assessment and procedure to avoid mistake in time and order. Avoid using SIM, patient, and client. Use only the universally acceptable abbreviations. If there is an error, do not use anything to erase or tamper it. Instead, put a horizontal line and write mistaken entry. Then put your initials or signature. But sometimes it varies in every hospital or clinic protocol. Circumstances affecting criminal liability. First, justifying circumstances. There is no criminal liability because the act is justified as reasonable, like for example, self-defense. Second, exempting circumstance. There is no criminal liability because the act being committed is excused, like for example, the person is imbecile, insane, below 9 years old, and there is a force majeure. Third, mitigating circumstance. It decreases the criminal liability because of equity and justice. For example, voluntary surrender and if the person is below 18 years old or above 70 years old. Lastly, aggravating circumstance. It increases the criminal liability like abuse of public position and treasury. Important laws related to nursing practice RA9173, Philippine Nursing Act of 2002 RA6173, Code of Conduct and Ethical Standards for Public Officials and Employees RA7160, Local Government Code RA7305, Magna Carta for Public Health Workers RA-2382, Philippine Medical Act, RA-9165, Dangerous Drug Act, RA-7600, Rooming In and Breastfeeding, RA-9288, Newborn Screening Act, RA-3573, All Communicable Diseases Should Be Reported, LOI-949, Legal Basis of Primary Health Care Lastly, PD-996, Compulsory Immunization of All Children Below 8 Years Old Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video!